The other side of the equation is the conceptual or cultural influences on how we see things. And these play a huge, huge role. Here's an example. If I was to show people this image of the world and I asked them what's wrong with it, the majority of people would say it's upside down. If you give it a little bit of thought, you will realize that that's not the correct answer. It's not upside down. It's just another way of looking at the map of the world. It's not upside down because there's no up or down in space. Um, wh where we have the North Pole and the South Pole, they could be in any orientation. We just happen to choose to put the North Pole at the top of an image and the South Pole at the bottom because it makes a lot more sense to the people who actually drew the maps originally, in other words, the Europeans. Uh, I have this map in my office. It's an upside down map with all the countries labeled. And what it does is it just allows me to look at the world completely differently. And when I change the image of the world, it, I change the way I think. And so I look at Australia, I look at Russia, I look at all these different countries in a slightly different way than I've been used to looking at them before. And merely changing our perception can change how we think about things. Um, here's a, a good example. This image is very famous from Apollo 17 of the Earth. Notice you've got Antarctica at the bottom. You've got Africa and Madagascar above it. However, when the astronauts took the picture, this is how it looked. This is what the astronauts actually saw looking out their window. And so you can see the Earth is just floating in space with no up or no down. Yes, it spins on its axis, but generally speaking, it's just floating in a space that does have no direction to it whatsoever. So the way we look at things can be influenced um, by a great many things. One of them is cultural. So if I was to show you this picture of this person um, and ask you who do you think this is, you might be hard pressed to discover that it is actually what forensic scientists believe Jesus Christ looked like living 2,000 years ago in the Middle East. This is a much more accurate image than the cultural representations we're used to. So we look at this image here, we see on the left the typical Western portrayal of Jesus with blue eyes, fair skin, uh, often brown or, or lighter colored hair. In the middle we have an Ethiopian depiction of Jesus uh, as an African man. And on the right again that forensic reconstruction of what Jesus probably looked like and I think we'll all admit he looks probably more like somebody we find in Guantanamo Bay than someone uh, in church. So how we see the world, how we image the world to ourselves through art, through the media, through magazines, through television, is a way of doing things that is highly manipulated, culturally biased, shaped, uh, etc. And so between yourself and between the world, we have this whole array of things that influence the way in which we interpret things. Family is a huge one. Uh, depending on our parents, the way we were raised, how we were raised, the value system, what our parents taught us, uh, either actively or inactively, shapes us, makes us see the world in a particular way. Our work, the kind of work we do, will make us see the world in a particular way. For example, let's say you were looking at a mountain full of trees, and you had two people looking at the same mountain, and one person was a land real estate developer, and the other person was an ecologist. These two people looking at the same thing, a mountain full of trees, would see two totally different things. One might see profit, and the other might see biodiversity. Okay, so our orientation, our perspective, is shaped by the kinds of work that we do and the people we come into contact as a result of that work. Religion, as we just saw in the image of Jesus Christ, plays a huge role in shaping our perceptions, our understandings, and our beliefs about the world. Race, also, I don't think I need to go into great detail here. Um, same with gender, whether you're male or female is going to influence how you think of things. Your income, your social status, how much money you have uh, plays a big role. Your peers, very powerful, very influential. Who do you hang around with? What are they like? What kinds of ideas do they have? What kinds of values do they hold? And as well as the media. We turn on the television, we turn on the radio, we open up the laptop. We're having information come to us that's actually been tailor-made, shaped, manipulated, molded. And so everything between us and the world is playing this active role of constructing a very particular way of seeing the world. Now you might be wondering, 
well, is there any way to get around this? Can we just bypass all of this stuff uh, in the middle? Um, this isn't a philosophy class, so I, I would be hesitant to answer yes or no with any great degree of certainty. But I would say that the difference between the person who knows that they have all of these lenses, all of these cultural intermediaries between them and how they see the world, and the person who doesn't know about that is a huge difference. Because the person who's unaware of this thinks that what they see is, is factual, it's natural, it's true. The person who's aware of these influences might be a bit more self-reflective and think to themselves, well, you know, which ones serve me well and which ones don't? And so this space, this place between us and the world, I've often referred to as our box. You hear the expression, step outside the box. One way of thinking of that expression is this way, to step around this box, to go around it, to uh, bypass a lot of these things especially if they're the kinds of things that um, might be based on stereotype or prejudice. But the one thing our box does for us is it pro provides a sense of comfort and a sense of security. Uh, it becomes habitual. We begin to see the world in ways that are comfortable to us and they make sense to us. But we got to be careful not to misunderstand that security for truth. In any way. And so examining this box is something we want to be doing in this art course because classes in art or in media studies or in visual studies or psychology are ways of uh, looking at this box, examining this box and thinking which ones, which perceptions or lenses do I have that I don't need, that are counterproductive, that are stereotypical, that are habitual, that are not helping me see the world freshly and more correctly. Um, we often refer to this whole process as experience as being mediated, that there's something between us and the world. And this is a very important uh, discovery of the last 100 years and has been confirmed uh, again and again and again. And so we're very careful when we talk about things to try to understand in what way, what perspective are we coming from. And when we read what other people have to say about the arts, for example, being aware of their perspective, where are they coming from, what cultural lens is informing their way of discussing these things. The other side of the box, the positive side, is that we can use this whole idea of lenses, of perspectives, as a way of gaining greater understanding, of achieving more perspectives. Reading is a great example. We read books, we see the world through a character's eyes, we experience their thoughts, their trials, their tribulations. We, we experience that at the movies. We, when you're at a movie and you're watching somebody and you're, you're crying or you're, you're scared or you're suspenseful, you know, you're in a situation where you know it's not true. It's all an illusion. It's all fake. But you look at this movie and you entertain the idea of what it must be like to be this kind of person with these kinds of traits experiencing these sorts of events. And so we can use movies, and movies have been used in many, many ways in the past like this, to expand, to learn more about other types of people, other types of cultures, other time periods. Art is also one of those things. By looking at paintings, by looking at sculpture, by looking at architecture, we see things through different eyes. And these different eyes um, can expand our awareness. And so this box or this mediated experience is not necessarily something that's always a problem, but rather it's something to be aware of and something to think about and become conscious of how you're using it, how you're expanding it, and how you're developing it. And that concludes our first audio lecture.